Greetings loyal subscribers and honoured guests. So far for Cyberpunk September, I've looked at an adventure game, a bartender simulator, and a fast paced action RPG. This time I'm looking at a game where you play as a courier during their first day on the job in a very dangerous city. Does it deliver a fun experience? Let's dive in and see. Cloudpunk was originally released for Steam in 2020 and was later brought over to the PS4 and the Switch. I originally picked up a PS4 copy in a sale as it was ridiculously cheap. Then Humble recently had their Cyberpunk Playground bundle, so I ended up getting that and playing it from beginning to end on my Steam Deck as I have been doing more and more recently. The developer is called Iron Lands, who hail from Germany and they are currently putting the finishing touches on Nivalis, which is a sequel to Cloudpunk due out in 2024. As the game opens up you are introduced to your main character, Rania, as she begins her first shift for the slightly shady Cloudpunk courier service. Most of your time spent in this game will be flying your hover vehicle from one designated place to another and dropping off packages, as you might expect. There are also plenty of occasions where you will be on foot though, I would almost describe this game as a walking simulator, or rather flying, as the majority of your time will be spent in transit, getting from one place to another. There isn't much stress or challenge to any of it, which makes it a very relaxing and laid back experience. What help keeps the game interesting though, are the moral choices that you'll be frequently presented with throughout the campaign. One of the earliest examples of this is when one of your packages starts ticking. You can either go through with the delivery and keep your new employer happy, or you can ditch the package if you think there is a chance that it is a bomb that, and you may cause people harm. I hear noise. What noise, Camus? Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. From the package. I hear it too. I still have bad feelings. One second, Camus. Control, come in. Control, this is Driver 14 FC. Come in, this is important. Driver 14 FC, this is Control. Please deliver your current package with urgency. Control, why is this package ticking? You don't think you should have to do that. Call all these problems. Fine, I'll tell her. The game continues in this vein throughout the story, offering you one choice that is obviously morally reprehensible and another that is the good thing to do. Disappointingly though, none of these choices ultimately mattered by the climax of the story, at least not in the main campaign. You see, I have just discovered the existence of some DLC called City of Ghosts, where apparently these choices do actually have an impact. I'm definitely going to have to check that out as well at some point. Getting back to the main campaign though, one of the most enjoyable aspects of Cloudpunk for me was the writing, and the genuinely interesting and colourful characters that you meet. From your companion Camus, who started life as a robotic dog but is now loaded into your hover, to the android Huxley, who has the personality and speech patterns of a classic noir detective, Cloudpunk is filled with fascinating characters who compel you to keep playing. The game never quite lives up to the promise of the writing, unfortunately, as despite being faced with a huge choice at the end of the story, the game apparently ends the same way regardless. Again the DLC supposedly addresses this shortcoming. We shall see. Navalis is an interesting place to be in with its distinct class system of poor people stuck at the bottom and the rich CEOs in their glass towers high up in the sky. I look forward to spending more time within it. Another big strength of Cloudpunk is the sound design. While playing you are completely enveloped by the sounds of the city, from the drones of passing hovers to the sardonic advertisements and the constant patter of the ceaseless rain. This is supported by a fantastic synthwave score which is probably my favourite of the four cyberpunk games I've looked at so far, and it has some strong competition. The game is fully voiced too and, and is mostly brilliant, with just the occasional line read that was a bit off. I'm not certain whether this was deliberate because the android speaking the dialogue wasn't familiar with the correct pronunciation or if it was just the actor who got it wrong. As most of the acting in the game is spot on, I choose to believe the former is the case. The standout performances for me were Mike Burlack of Control, who will be giving you your jobs and instructions all through the night, Corey Herndon as your formerly canine companion Camus, and Cam Cornelius as Huxley, though Andrea Patril does a fine job as the main character Rania as well. My ship had finally come in, but in this case, the ship was a battered hova. Redemption comes in all shapes and sizes, sometimes with bumps, dents, and a dime store paint job. What? Who is this? The dame wanted a name. What did I have left to lose? And nothing but my hat. 
I let her know that I was Huxley, but I uh, left off the private investigator. She'd know the deal soon enough. Visually the game is pretty striking as well, although not everyone will be a fan of the rather basic voxel look of the characters when outside of the hovers. This was probably done for logistical reasons, as a small indie developer would struggle to produce a full scale city full of realistic looking people, whereas a stylized version would be more attainable. It didn't especially bother me though. I thought the little voxel characters helped make the game stand out from everything else. The rest of the game looks amazing, with the roiling purple and blue clouds in the sky, the highways full of hover trails, and the trademark neon of the cyberpunk genre everywhere you look. As you roam around the districts of Nivalis, you can find many collectibles which are indicated on the map, but most of these don't seem to actually serve any purpose other than as junk that you can sell for money. Every so often though, one of them will trigger a particular side quest. These are fairly well hidden, and I'm quite certain I didn't find all of them. I did discover a few, but How Long to Beat says you can spend about 10 hours in the game if you do everything, whereas my completion time was only about 8 hours. This is a decent length for this sort of game. Touching on the DLC again, it is apparently at least as long as the main game, and adds a lot more action to the gameplay, including hover races and missions where you can actually die if you fail. I'm most definitely interested in playing it, but for now it will have to wait until I've got through the remaining games for Cyberpunk September. Cloudpunk has a regular asking price of $16.99 when it's not on sale, or there is an Ultimate Edition which also includes the City of Ghosts DLC, as well as its soundtrack. The base game can be picked up for as little as £4 when on sale, and I have no doubt it will be included in more bundles going forward. The DLC only seems to be available for the Steam version as well. The PS4 and the Switch never got it, which is a shame as most people are saying it actually feels like it completes the story and finally delivers on the promise of the base game. I will have to bring you a follow up review when I've played it though, but for now I will just leave you by saying I really did enjoy my time spent with the base campaign for Cloudpunk, though it did feel slightly flat by the end. I still feel it is worthwhile though, just bear in mind that you will probably want to pick up City of Ghosts as well to get the most of it. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please consider leaving a like, dropping a comment, subscribing to the channel, or sharing it on social media. In the next episode, I will be taking a look at Lacuna. See you in the Matrix, and in the meantime, take care.